Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to be working with you on my 2023 yearbook pages for the month of March. The yearbook project is one that I have undertaken for the 2023 annual year. And it's where I am documenting using a combination of project lifestyle pages, as well as some larger story album, uh, photo enlargements, more crafty type of pages as well. So there's a combination of both inside of these albums. And because of that, I generally am able to get about two to three months per album. Today we have another, I wanna say about four pages to finish up for the month of March. So we're going to start with the process videos for all four of those layouts. And then we will do a flip through of the entire month so you can see how everything flows from page to page and get an idea for where you can find the process videos for the rest of the stories included in this album. Without further ado, let's go ahead and head over to my desk and get started working on some layouts. All right, so let's hop into the first of the four layouts that we're gonna put together today. This first one's gonna come together super quick. It's just my introduction title page into the month of March. I had actually replanted and moved around a couple of the plants in our house at the beginning of the month and took this picture of one of the plants that used to be on my kitchen windowsill and now it's on this buffet table that we have in our living room. And I love the way that it looks. I love how it flows over this little pot that I found in the Target dollar aisle. It's just really pretty. And I thought that it would make a great introduction into the month. Something very simple um, that's pretty, that doesn't have a huge amount of story to it. So I don't feel the need to tell the story of that plant. It's just a picture that I can enjoy. At the bottom of the picture, I put on a label with a chipboard piece on top of that, a chipboard that I've had for ages. It says, you know, like cleaning up and refreshing and that sort of vibe, which is exactly what we were doing in the month of March. Moving on to my first of two larger stories that I'm going to tell today. This one is telling the story of our in-laws or my in-laws coming to stay with us for a couple of days at the beginning of March. Our cousin, my husband's cousin and my sister are both pregnant and they're both due in the same week of April. So they both actually ended up having their baby showers on the same day. My sister-in-law and her family drove in from North Carolina to come and attend the baby shower for their cousin and stayed with us in the process. It was the first time that we hosted family at our house. We had just upgraded Izzy's room to a queen size bed, which allows it to serve as a guest bedroom. And then Izzy can go stay in the top bunk of Jonah's bunk beds. So it was really exciting to finally be able to offer our family to stay with us. Our niece, Sylvia, who is pictured here, is turning to fairly soon. I think her birthday's in June. So she is just this little bundle of absolute joy. She says the silliest things. She actually talks a lot for her age. Either that or I'm just, I just don't remember very much about that age since my kids are quite a bit older than her. It was so fun to have her around and to be able to interact with her and have the kids play with her and just really get to know her at this age. Super grateful that they were able to come. For the layout itself, I am using a combination of some supplies from Allie Edwards that I just have in my stash. That's where that large green pattern paper came from. On top of that, I'm adding six tags from one of the Studio Calico documenter kits. I believe it was called... I'm really bad. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm really bad at remembering the names of the Studio Calico kits. I think because the names don't always super relate to the products inside, unlike Ali Edwards products where... It's easier to remember because it's either the name of a month or it's the name like a single word that carries through the entire collection for those story kits. The Studio Calico ones are a little tougher for me so I'll have to go in and, and see if I can figure out where this one came from and I'll add it into the 
uh, description box down below if it's still available. So it came with a plethora of these tags. I chose six of them. I wanted them to be in various colors, in various shapes, and then to create this tag collage page that goes along with the full-size photo on the left side. For attaching the tags onto the pattern paper, I first just added a little tiny bit of roller adhesive into the center of the tags so I could place them onto the paper and have them lightly adhered before deciding if that was for sure where they were going to go. Then once everything was spaced the way that I wanted it, I could pull them back up, add adhesive over the entire back of those tags, and then stick it back down on the paper. The tags are not going to be interactive. They won't swivel, they won't flip or anything like that. They are adhered completely to the page. However, I wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz to them. So I did pull out some older, uh, they are bronze colored or like a bronze metal heart brad that are super old. Those are back from the Connect Story Kit from Allie Edwards. So I will be using those inside of each of the little holes where you could put twine or a brad. And even though it is not interactive, it doesn't actually function, it is a really nice touch decoratively. I'm super glad that I decided to go with that instead of twine this time around. I also have a collection of these little refrigerator tile chipboard pieces. Each of them has a word or two on it, and I'm going to stick one onto each of those tags. On the large photo to the left, I had the title Today and Story. Those are older from, I believe, a One Little Word collection from a couple years ago. I adhered those to the bottom of the photo, which I really like because Sylvia is looking down. She's looking down at something in her hands, but because her eyes are directed downwards, you are naturally inclined to look towards the bottom of the photo as well. So that was the perfect place for me to put my title. And then I added a couple of little embellishments above the title, a chipboard arrow that points over to the story that, you're, that you can read to pertain to this photo. And then above that, I have one more of those refrigerator tile chipboard pieces just to help tie everything together. So here is the completed page. And then we are going to move on to the next one. This is actually going right next to the Sylvia story that we just told. This one is about my younger sister's baby shower. She had her baby shower at the beginning of the month of March, and we already knew that the baby is going to be a girl and that her name was going to be Sophia. So for this, I took a bunch of pictures at the baby shower. I didn't actually take very many during the shower itself. It was more the decorations and the setup. And then I had one or two pictures of my sister as she was opening her gifts. One of the other things that I'm using in this layout is the original invitation that my sister sent out for the shower. I'm going to turn that into a flip out and you'll see that here in a little bit. For this story, I'm using the hexagon a scrapbook kit from Ali Edwards. This one is very old, not available anymore, but one that I've just kind of had in my stash. I pulled out the pattern paper that was included in that kit and added my journaling underneath each of those story titles. So it says story one, story two, story three. Then uh, the journaling there pertains to the photo that I have in the hexagon space. I use the digital version of that paper to create the hexagon photos so that once I cut them out, all I had to do was stick them down into the hexagon white space. And then I used some of those nesting wood veneer hexagon shapes and used those as frames for the photos on that paper. Here is where we're going to build this flip out that will go onto the full page photo. For the invitation, I used one of the center pieces of the wood veneer. Uh, they're like nested chipboard pieces, not chipboard, nested wood veneer pieces. There it is. And it says something like, I don't know, something, something. Let me see if I can look real close and see what it says. Just beautiful, I think is what it says there. I'm using that as a tab. So that's going to help give you something to hold on to when you flip this portion to the left side. Then I trimmed out a piece of plain copy paper. So it's very lightweight. It's two inches wide by the length tall. Folded that in half. And then I'm sandwiching the card 
the invitation and then a picture of my sister that I printed roughly to be the same size, but I did have to trim it down just a little bit. Those are sandwiched onto one of the flaps. So that's going to give you the portion that will flip out to the side. Then I'm going to add adhesive to the inside portion of the opposite flap put this, position it onto the full page photo where I want it to go, and then I can flip it over and just press down on the, the hinge piece. And then we have a functioning flip out. Because this photo is going to be adhered to the back side of the journaling that we just did, that collage tag page, you won't see the opposite side. You won't even see like the hinge that's on the back side of the photo. And in fact, the that's actually going to help hold it very secure when everything is put together. Once I had this part done, I decided I wanted to add a couple of embellishments in here that it just felt a little plain. I totally could have left it. It would have been fine to just leave it alone, but I did pull a couple of little pieces out of my stash to use. One to put on the picture of my sister. It's a hexagon fabric piece with a little phrase strip across the top and then two little asterisk chipboards next to the cupcake in the center and now we have the second story done and we can move on to my finale page for march this is a page that i repeat the same exact layout month to month to month so if you've seen this video before for the month of february or january this is going to look exactly the same as it will when we continue through the month too First, I am adding my stamping to my gratitudes there. So I've got the word thankful on the top and then 01 through 05 along the side. Then I'm grabbing my March 3 by 8 pattern paper there, adding in my date stamping for the eight different things that happen or that I wanted to highlight for the month. And then I also have printed photos in a 2x2 two two collage where I've got all of those photos that pertain to the... Uh, the journaling that I have on the March section. So there's eight pieces of journaling and then the eight photos that it relates to. Then it's just building the flip out and adding this onto a full template. So the first thing I'm doing here is making my actual fold out, doing the exact same thing that we did with the invitation earlier. So I have a, a piece of copy paper that's two inches in width, folded it in half so it becomes a hinge, and then I am sandwiching the photo and this journaling section together on the one side and then on the inside of the opposite portion. <laughs> I'm trying to, how do I explain this in a way that makes sense? On the opposite side is where we have that thankful. Then I've printed or I've trimmed out a piece of copy paper that is seven inches by eight and a quarter. So I can add the photo that's going to go along one side onto the right portion of that paper. And then I can add the thankful portion on the other. So then this builds my full page. It just needs to be hole punched. I'm going to add a couple of embellishments onto here. So a chipboard into the middle of the plant and a chipboard into the middle of the photo collage there. And then we can stick it into the album and call this one done. Woo! There we go, friends. So that was four layouts that we just completed. Once we get this in, I will go back to the beginning and we'll flip through all of it. All right, friends, that completes my March pages. So let's go ahead and flip through all of the pages included in March's section. We start with my usual divider here. Again, this is from an older One Little Word album that came with all of the dividers and I'm using them in this particular book. Then we've got the title page that we put together today, just a picture of a plant that I moved in my house and I really liked the way that it looked here. The chipboard that just says cleaning house, freshening up, feeling thankful for it all, which is very reminiscent of how our March looked around here. Then we get into the first Project Life spread for this month. And for this one, I am using one of the Studio Calico kits. I believe this one was called The Sweet Life. I'll be sure to link any of the products that I used in the description down below if they are still available for purchase. So that was this one, all of the little bits and pieces from the week, and then the larger stories that tell two of the more major things that happened one of which was our family coming to visit from North Carolina. So this is a picture of our niece and then all of the little tags, which you saw me put this one together. And then the picture or the, the picture, the story of my sister's 
uh, baby shower. So we've got this one here. So from there, the rest of these we didn't put together today, except for, I guess, that last page. This one here is another Project Life spread. For this one, I used some papers from a Studio Calico kit from a traveler's notebook. I actually just take those traveler's notebooks apart and use them like pattern paper instead. So I did that with some stamping and vellum, a very kind of average week. Didn't take a lot of pictures, didn't have a lot of stories. Uh, or at least not a lot of little stories to tell. So I kept this one fairly simple. For the two stories in between, these are two layouts that I created using the Labels Quarterly Scrapbooking Kit from Allie Edwards. I actually made these live over on the Allie Edwards Craft the Story Facebook page, which you can find over there if you're looking for a place to find more process videos. So this first one is uh, just some lessons, some current lessons learning. I typed out 10, no, eight. I typed out eight different lessons that pertain to the eight different circles and the little titles over here so trusting yourself be honest dream big keep learning live simply see the good take time for yourself and live a good life and just talked about areas of my life that these specific prompts made me think of on the back side of this I have a story about myself so again this week there really wasn't a lot happening so I took the opportunity to do some stories that were more about me my frame of mind where I was at in this particular week so for this one I used the stamps I believe this stamp was from a one little word stamp set from one of the quarterly kits but I don't remember which one it just said I am and I loved that so I said I am and then did a little bit about things that were going on in my life. Um, again, using the labels scrapbook kit for the paper on the right hand side, paired this with a photo, called that good. Then we get into the next week's Project Life spread. This one also used that same quarterly scrapbooking kit, so the labels quarterly scrapbooking kit. It came with a bunch of these really cute little um, labels. They are cardstock labels and I decided to use the ones that I could fit into the boxes on these layouts and you know, turn them any which way in order to get some journaling on there in addition to stapling on a few of those titles. These were the black plastic titles that were included in that collection. For my stories this week, I talked about going and running a Girl Scout cookie booth with my daughter and what that's been like, just the experience of doing cookie sales. This is our first year doing the Girl Scout program. So some thoughts on that. For this one, I used another Studio Calico um, Studio Calico kit. This one, it was the, a combination of the documenter kit and then also one of the stamp sets. And I believe this one was called, I don't know, I need to get better at remembering my Studio Calico, um, the names of those. I don't remember, but I will link it down below for you. And maybe it will come to mind as we flip through the pages. Anyhow, this is using Studio Calico. The background of this paper was one that I actually jelly printed like years ago and had in my stash. So I pulled that out. I created my own tags using the stamp set and just cutting them out of plain paper and then wrote my journaling on top of that. The second story was about a play date. So we had our friends over over the weekend and it was just really a really, really nice time to just have some adult time with the parents and then the kids ran around with each other and had a blast. It was a good time. For this one, I also used the Studio Calico kit that I can't remember the name of, <laughs> which will be in the description box down below. It had a sticker sheet that was filled with labels and I thought it would be so fun to take those and rearrange them on the bottom half of a larger photo. So I have the photo as the focal point and my title here. And then all of my journaling is inside of the labels here, in addition to just a little bit on the left side as well. Then we've got our next Project Life spread here. This one, I went back and pulled out more of the products from the Sweet Life Studio Calico kit, uh, which had these cute little little, um, oh, I got a heart that's falling. Let's fix that real quick. Um, had these cute little tags on there. So I cut those out to use on the page here. I loved the polka dot background. It just felt very spring, very happy. Um, and a lot of what we did this week was spring and happy. So it fit very well. 
Then I have one of two stories that I created for the inspiration by the month class for the month of May. So if you are a subscriber to that kit, to the uh, inspiration by the month classroom or the uh, stories by the month subscription, then you will be able to see the process videos for both of these inside of that classroom. The first one here is about going to a plant nursery with my daughter. And then the second one was about just all of the things we were doing around here at this point in time that felt very spring-like. And I talked about a lot of that. So these are pictures that I took from around the house of things we were doing. My next Project Life spread here is using, I believe, Oh, you know what? This was actually the March, I think. It's either March or April stories by the month. It came with these vellum colorful tags that I cut apart and added them into the sections of my Project Life spread, stapled them on here, and then I printed my journaling on top of uh, clear matte sticker paper, which is generally what I do for pages like this, trimmed it down and stuck it on top of those tags. Uh, that way I could get more journaling onto the tags. You can kind of, like, it's not perfectly see-through, but it's good enough for me. It doesn't bother me too much. So I have that. There are also two little tags that pull out and reveal more photos behind them. These I cut out of a journaling card. So I just tried to use all of the different tag portions. Um, and then for the, for the little pockets that they go in, these are plastic pockets that I made using a transparency, and then I stitched it on with my sewing machine. Okay, so moving on to the first big story of the week. This is a small story <clears throat> that feels kind of like a big story. This was about my husband and I going grocery shopping together, which we haven't done in a long, long time. For this one, I used the labels story. The, you know what? This was labels wait a second so that other one okay i lied i lied back here where i said this was labels this was not labels this was using all of my one little word supplies so everything here was from one little word like a either a mini kit or um or the main kit and then this was also all one little word supplies this over here is using the labels quarterly scrapbooking kit from Allie Edwards. So for this one, I the whole story over here, so this is a, it reads from left to right like a story. So it's not separate little things in each one. Each one leads into the next one. And I thought that was a really fun way to use this paper. This was a 12 by 12 paper also that I cut down. And because it was really hard to figure out exactly where to place my journaling on the section that I had already cut out, I decided to go ahead and print my journaling on that clear matte sticker paper again, and then just trim it out and stick it down into each of those sections. Yes, it was very tedious. However, I really, really like the way that this one turned out. There are a few of these black little phrase strips that fit perfectly on the page over some of those labels, and I thought that also gave this a really fun touch. This one here is, again, the labels quarterly scrapbooking kit. I have this picture that I printed of my daughter painting a birdhouse and I talked about her painting the birdhouse um, while I'm trying to think. I think our, our basement had actually flooded because this week was the end of March and the beginning of April. So it went to April 2nd. On April 1st, our basement flooded and my husband and I and some helpers in our family who came over to help us had to move everything out and it was just a whole, it was a whole thing. So while we were doing that, Izzy was painting a birdhouse and I took a picture of her and it was just this real contrast between the chaos and the stress of trying to fix the basement and then also this really peaceful, lovely moment of her painting the birdhouse. So I've got some journaling down below, the picture up above. Uh, this was from a pattern paper that I cut all apart and then rearranged so that it would fit on the bottom half like this. I super love how that turned out. This one and that one little word, so like I said earlier, the one little word stories that I did, or stories with one little word supplies, are in that Facebook group 
these pages are as well. So that is the Craft the Story Facebook group, which I'll link in the description in case you're looking for that. And then we come to the last page, which is my March recap. I've got a picture of me with a new plant that we bought when we went to the nursery. I've got the eight different things that I wanted to draw attention to for the month as a whole. And then the eight photos that pertain to those eight different things, along with five gratitudes for the month. So... Friends, that is March, finally, finally completed. I also have April ready to go. I just need to put it all together. So I'm hoping to get to that uh, right after, now that I finish this, I'm hoping to just go ahead and get that one done as well so I can get that video out to you as soon as possible. So keep an eye out for it if you're, if you're enjoying these videos and you wanna see what comes next. If you have any questions or you know just wanna chit chat with me, whatever it is, leave those in the comments down below. I'm so excited always when I get comments from all of you. If you enjoyed this video, uh, give the video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Enjoy the weekend ahead and I'll see you around in the next video, friends. Bye now.